And so the next presenter is um, Nakia Monet, and she's going to be sharing about her grandmother. And I'm so excited uh, to learn more about her. Uh, when Nakia shared with me about this you know, wonderful, amazing woman, uh, I was so excited and, and really glad that she chose to just share this story with us today. So Nakia, I can leave the, the slide up as long as you like, and then at some point I can take it down if you would like. Go ahead, okay. you have the floor. No problem, thank you. Um, one of the things that I will say is, is that um, my great grandmother, uh, growing up, I lived with her up until I think I was like two years old, probably from like one to two or something like that. Uh, my mother was going to school and um, me and my sister, we needed to be somewhere full time. And my great grandmother, one of the things that she never did was she never allowed um, any of her grandchildren or any child um, to not be raised properly. And especially if your parent was trying to better yourself, especially with school and stuff. So we went down to Georgia uh, to live with her. And one of the things that she instilled in us from a young age um, was our faith and our belief. My grandmother um, was, was Catholic and um, her faith was extremely strong in God. And so she was honestly kind of like the first introduction to um, a godly person, a Christian person that I ever met. And one of the things that she always fostered in, um, in all of us was strong belief, strong faith, um, school, and then um, the ability to fight. Um, she was known in Athens, Georgia as a activist. She was known in Athens, Georgia as a person that stood up for the people and stood up for people's rights. She was known as a person um, in Georgia that literally would go around a neighborhood. We used to go to, um, we would go to church on Sundays and she would literally go around a neighborhood and pick up all the kids and bring them to church on Sundays. Um, we used to participate in, um, in like a uh, like a like a summer camp, but it was through the church, and the church called it Scripture Safari. And mm -hmm. being a kid, I didn't really understand what Scripture Safari meant. But as an adult, when I think back on those days, that they literally would take us on a journey through the scriptures, right? And um, we had to learn. I mean, we learned so much in those short months because we literally spent every summer up until I was like ten years old going down to Athens, Georgia. So we learned a lot from my great grandmother, although as a kid, I did not appreciate it because I did not like going to her house. She did not have cable. There was no type of internet, anything like that. And I always dreaded the fact that we would only have like public access television um, and could potentially only watch like shows that I absolutely did not want to watch on TV, right? So, but because we did not have TV to watch, the only thing we had to do was talk and play with each other. That meant we would have to go outside. Um, one of the things that she always kept her front yard, she kept it so beautiful with flowers, right? And for me, the flowers always symbolized there had to be a lot of bees in the front. So I didn't like going in the front, but she had a tree that we always liked to play under in the front. Um, in her backyard, she always, she grew once again, her flowers and everything. One of the, and she just always tend to her yard and she instilled in us such value um, within our own selves. And the work that she actually did do within the community. She was responsible. So Athens, Georgia was actually separated. Um, there was a black side and there was a white side. The white side had running water, the black side did not. And one of the things that she fought for was the running water um, into the, onto the black side, right? Um, sewage, because uh, the majority of the houses on the black side of Athens did not have actual sewage. So they still had outhouses. So one of the things that um, that she was a major advocate for, which she helped them to get the grant for, was to produce the, um, the piping and the sewage on the black side of Athens, Georgia, um, for the infrastructure to be built for who the poor families. Um, another thing that she did, um, her and a, and a couple other, uh, I think two or three other black women, were they were one of them, the, the, the first founders of the first, uh, first black credit union in Athens, Georgia. Um, because one of the things that she was actually very great at was saving money. Um, I did not necessarily know my great grandmother ever had a job, although she did work, right? But for me, I always saw her at home. Um, but the work that she did within the community was so great. That was her work. 
um, they always said that she was very brash with her words. And I said, clearly that has to be hereditary because that is one of the things that I always get um, dinged for in every facet of life is the fact that I don't hold back and I don't hold my tongue for anybody. And um, one of the things that they said was, was that every time she would walk into um, a meeting, how she would introduce herself was she would say, my name is Jesse Barnett and I represent the poor because that's whom she felt was um, at a disadvantage. Um, and that's whom she felt needed their voice to be heard. And she wanted to be the one um, in order to do that. And it's something that I think that she instilled in all of us is that if you're gonna stand and stand strong and don't hold back, you know, if, if you're gonna open your mouth then you better open your mouth and say something. Um, don't just open your mouth just to be talking. And one of the things that I remember growing up that she honestly, she couldn't stand, number one, you couldn't drink in her house at all. And you for sure couldn't cuss in her house. And if you did any one of those two things and she caught you in her house doing it, she was going to kick you right up out of her house. And she did do that. She didn't, and she didn't hold back from that either. She stood tall in her convictions um, as a Christian. She stood tall in her convictions as a woman. And she stood tall in her convictions even as a mother. So there were certain things that she just would not tolerate. And um, she instilled a lot of that in her children. Uh, she was very much so very instrumental in the desegregation of Athens, Georgia and their schools. Um, and I want to say that one of my aunts, she was one of the one of the first to go to um, a desegregated school in Athens, Georgia, because those were the things that she stood for. Um, and even as she got older um, and, you know, she she began to suffer from uh, dementia, um, she always still could tell the stories. Right. You know, dementia is, 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 is it's very taxing on the mind, but as taxing as it was on her mind, she still could remember. And as far back as she would go, because she, one, I mean, one day she told the story, she, I prom, in my mind, I was like, she clearly went way back to slavery, although she, she was not a slave. But in my mind, the story went so far back that she remembered how they were treated. She remembered the, the fight that even they had to go through, not in Athens, but in Rails, Georgia, that's originally where um, they're from. And um, in the way in which she would tell the story and the way in which um, she ensured that Everyone in the family from, especially my generation now, this generation that came after us, I'm not too sure about. And it's because a lot of the times when the older people die off, um, a lot of the traditions go with them. So my great grandmother was very much so instrumental in us maintaining and holding family reunions, maintaining and holding that, that type of culture and bringing the family together. And part of the thing that they would do is that no matter where we were at, if we were in Georgia, the family reunion would always have to go back to rail. So we would have to see the, the, the one house that was the church house. It was the regular house. It was the school house. It, that, that house was, has basically been passed out in my family since then. And um, she would always make sure that we would go back to the country because she wanted us to remember where we came from. If we were in North Carolina, we would have to go back and remember where the, you know, everything was built upon the roots. And one of the things that I will say is that she ensured that we, as much as I did not appreciate it growing up because I did not like going down into the country, they definitely still did not have running water down the rail and I was not using anybody's outhouse, but the lessons that we learned from all of that, which is where we came from, and it gave us a true sense of grounding. So one of the things that she did was she ensured that we were all grounded in truth and that we were all grounded in who we are and um, in where we came from. Something that one of my uncles, um, her son did was was that they literally traced back the history of the family through slavery through down to the slave owner that owned the family mr walton in my mind i swear he got to be somehow related to walmart but they all tell me no but it's okay but um all of my family's history is actually on file at the university of georgia athens campus because it's such a rich history in athens because of where the family actually came from who owned them and then how they prospered through to at that time. So we all have such um, a deeper level of understanding, especially when we started looking at a lot of the slave documents, how our family was split up, how they were um, identified, how uh, they were described, um, you know, all the way down to who they were sold to, the reason why they were sold and the extremely limited birth records. Even to this day, I have no idea exactly when my great grandmother was born. 
um, as far as the year is concerned, we always knew her birthday was December 25th, but we never, we still don't necessarily know the year. So we say that she died back in 2010 um, at the age of 96, but we could be somewhere off, right? Due to the fact that the records were never really kept clear. But one of the things that she always kept clear was who she, who she is and who she stood for. And that's something that um, I believe all of us um, have literally taken to heart from myself, my sister, my cousins, all of us that were truly raised around her and grew up in that time in which the tradition was so strong, um, we have a deeper sense of where we come from. And I think one of the things that we struggle with is how to pass it on to this newer generation because uh, a lot of the older generation has passed on. So um, it's, it's hard to find a person that can literally carry that torch. But what I will say is, is that because of who she is, is who we are today. Wow, thank you, Nakia. I'm just gonna share share that screen again. Um, and we celebrate Mrs. Jesse Walnut Barnett and for the awesome contribution. This is just awesome hearing that she was a facilitator and spearheaded this um, uh, water line so that there will be running water in the homes. There'll be sewage. You wouldn't have to use the outhouse and started a credit union. It's just amazing the things that um, uh, some of our ancestors were able to accomplish with so little, they were able to do so much and it's tenacity to show up and say, you know, her name and that she's representing the poor unashamedly. Uh, just, just really awesome. I also like that you share about how um, you are able to trace back your family history. And oftentimes we think that black folks are so disconnected in this country from their roots that, well, no one really knows where they came from, et cetera, et cetera. The truth is there are records. Uh, plantation owners kept very intact 